cranberry pond. Another site which has a lot of glacial characteristics and also we are able to see Mount Toby which will get us into the territory of plate tectonics in just a minute. Right now what I want to point out is behind me this long hill that the road follows down and then cuts through is a glacial hill known as an esker. The esker is a long snaky hill that follows the course of a river that used to run on top of the glacier. Now we're going to go out along it and see what we can see from the end of it as the esker itself dives into Cranberry Pond. Okay, so now we are on the esker that we pointed to from the parking lot over there. In order to get here, you have to follow the road down a little ways and come back up. And as you come up, you're walking along the side of this esker, which remember is a long, snaky hill that formed underneath a river on a glacier. It's all that river sediment lined up and then dropped straight down and the glacier melted. And so we have continued walking down the esker that we started at by walking through the parking lot. And this esker continues for quite a little way. It goes on and if you look on either side of you, you've got the pond. This is Cranberry Pond. And the esker eventually plunges into the pond and continues underwater. Now, of course, uh, this pond itself is an, also another gift from our friends, the glaciers. And I'm trying not to fall over these tree stumps as I walk backwards, but if you look around you, one of the reasons we picked this place is that it's just incredibly beautiful. And this is what's called a kettle pond. When glaciers move over the land, one thing they'll do, particularly as they're falling apart, it's getting warmer, chunks of them will break off and get buried under all the debris. The till that they pile into hills also piles over the chunks of glacier. And then later on, after the glacier is gone and then the ice is buried under all that debris, the ice melts, the debris falls down, and you have a kettle pond shaped similar to a kettle. Walden Pond, some of you have been to, is another kettle pond. There's a lot of kettle ponds in New England that were formed by glaciers. Now, these are glacial aspects of the formations here. Deep underground here, though, under all this glacial till uh, that has made this long, snaky hill, is a lot of bedrock from the Connecticut River Valley. So we get back to the plate tectonics and erosion and deposition aspect of this visit. Back when the Connecticut Rift Valley was being ripped apart, it sped up the erosion. It made this deep valley, which was surrounded on both sides by giant mountains that had been built up when Pangaea was pressed together. So those mountains were made by tectonic motions, and then the ripping apart made a big valley. So there's a big difference in the height and the depth of the mountains and the valleys. And so rain and other uh, thing, wind and et cetera, gravity brought debris down from the mountains and made massive piles of sandstone and conglomerate. And up in the distance, one of the things that makes this a really special spot is Mount Toby, which is made of conglomerate. Big chunks of stone all stuck together. That is one of the youngest, it's probably the youngest uh, rock formation from the Connecticut Rift Valley Formation. After the lava flows stopped, the sandstone in Turner's Falls got laid down, and then later on, the Mount Toby conglomerate came down and filled in on top of that. And up there, this mountain here is Mount Toby, and it's a big pile of recycled mountain. Now, it wasn't originally set up like a big mountain. It was actually set up like a big fan of debris that came out of a mountain canyon. And what made it into a mountain was the same glacier that made this kettle pond and this esker. And the glaciers came through and carved valleys around the old pile of debris, leaving, instead of a big flat uh, fan-like structure, left a mountain that had been carved by ice. So this is a mountain of debris made of the old mountains that was carved into a mountain by the glaciers in the last set of ice ages. 
about 2 million to 20,000 years ago. Now here we are actually at the very edge of the water where the esker plunges into the water. I'm panning back to the path of the esker as it goes along through the pond. Either way, here comes Mr. Wheat walking along the path. And I will add that there is another way that eskers can form, which is they can actually form underneath a glacier. A river can be flowing under a glacier as the water melts and can also deposit the sediment in one of these long snaky hills of till as well. But here is Mr. Wheat as he comes to check out where the esker plunges into the water. Anything else to add, Mr. Wheat? Just that I hope that the day that you're here is like the day that we're here. <laughs>